everyone. This is Shravani Terli. I, I have done my MBBS from Swims, Sri Padmavati Medical College, Tirupati. Um, welcome everyone to Know Your Calling team, where we match students with perfect uh, branch. It's an absolute honor to inter, uh, interview Dr. Dibyesh Mandavya, sir, who is currently working as Associate Director uh, in the Origin Discovery Technology Limited and has vast experience for eight years. Uh, I extend a heartly welcome, uh, heartly welcome to you, sir. In today's discussion, uh, sir will enlighten us about pharmaceutical industries. Sir, uh, will you please start? Okay. Yeah. So uh, thank you, thank you, Sravani and the team that uh, you have invited me to give the industry perspective after MD Pharmac. So actually, it's uh, my pleasure, uh, and you have uh, start a good initiative to match the current PG experience to their uh, perfect branch. So this is really a good initiative and I am um, pleased to be part of this initiative. So yeah, so coming to the topic uh, that uh, after doing MD Pharma, what is the industry perspective? So just yes. to give the uh, things that uh, usually we uh, MD Pharma would have three options in yes. industry. So yes. there are three uh, different fields that are uh, for MD Pharma. So one is the, after them, it's a clinical development, clinical research. Another is the pharmacovigilance, which is the drug safety. And you, because all the MBBS students would know what is pharmacovigilance and the drug safety. It's so that is the uh, budding branch for all the PG experience uh, uh, who are doing after pharmacology uh, can do that kind of job. And third one is the medical marketing. So uh, I will go into the uh, uh, touching all this uh, aspect of the branch uh, during our discussion that what is the field that uh, one should choose or one can choose uh, yes, based on his or her uh, interest yes, and uh, my among these three fields my expertise lies in the first field which is a clinical development or clinical research so yes, so maybe more discussion might be on my uh, expertise field but i will touch upon all the fields uh, from the yes. industry so that's the brief about uh, 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 the uh, industry after doing MD Pharma. Yes, sir. sir already Tejas sir explained us about the general pharmacology aspect. Now uh, uh, we want to listen more about pharmaceutical industries and after the residency, how the future will be as a pharmacology resident. Okay. So, so uh, as I mentioned, that these are three uh, fields that one can opt. So based on his or her likings, so uh, one can choose this field. I will give just give what is the work that we do in a different field. Then uh, it will be good for everyone to take uh, informed opinion that uh, what should they pursue after it. So, so that's one thing else about the clinical development. So as the name suggests, clinical research, clinical development. So we do uh, uh, drug developments so after doing the preclinical studies. Uh, the clinical research and clinical trials will be done and yes, the core role of uh, doctors in that will be the designing of the studies so core uh, role would be so how to design how to manage the study in the medical and uh, from the safety perspective so because yes. the drug safety in uh, this so clinical trials will be ensured by the doctors because yes. the doctors can understand what is happening uh, uh, to the patient and they can explain very well to the investigators that uh, what sh should they do during the uh, uh, any kind of uh, safety emergency or for the cl clinical trial or what kind of uh, drug we are giving to the patient what kind of expected adverse events what kind of safety issues that might emerge and how to deal with them so so the clinical development clinical research the doctor's role would be confined to the designing of the different set of the clinical trials from starting from the phase one to phase three uh, and then after the approval. In this schema, uh, one would require good regulatory knowledge as well as the good knowledge of the clinical trial design. So, so that's there. Another thing, key thing will be required is the thorough with the literature. So actually, I, uh, so that's the, the key requisites. Uh, you have to read a lot during uh, even after MD. Uh, you have to read uh, for your branch, your field, uh, very well. Yes. So, what do you love more about your branch, and what are the pros and cons? And uh, tell me about the scope and pers perspective. Like, what is the scope of the branch in future? 
Uh, sorry for the disturbance. Uh, uh, so that's okay. uh, uh, yeah. So yeah. So the scope of the work, I would say, uh, in all the three branches, would be uh, vast in terms of the that after clinical research also, uh, one can opt uh, and go uh, in the corporate ladder till the vice president level. So the scope is very high. In pharmacovision, as if I would say that uh, one would start the journey as a drug safety physician, where the core role will be of uh, evaluating the SIEs, the uh, investigative case report forms, uh, the safety adverse events, and do the uh, aggregate reports. Means uh, uh, according to the different regulations, we have to compile the drug safety reports in a specified format, and then we have to submit to regulations. So that is the one role of the pharmacovigilance where the regulations are the key. Uh, and third role uh, and the third field, that is the medical marketing field, where uh, your primary role will be uh, related to the, uh, primary role will be related to the uh, medical expertise in terms of uh, giving the uh, marketing approach to the drug. Because what happens that uh, medical representatives or uh, other doctors, when the new drug is getting launched, it's difficult to explain by the uh, just uh, other science graduates about the mechanism, about the safety, about the efficacy of the drug. So everything would be explained by or uh, trained by the medic person to the uh, medical representative and the sales team and the complete marketing team. Uh, and then as required, they will do the CMEs uh, to the doctors, the uh, practitioners to uh, get them uh, uh, relate the data of the efficacy as well as the safety of the drug. So that is the medical marketing field. So here, uh, if I would say in all three fields, uh, in medical marketing fields, uh, the literature review is utmost important, like uh, uh, clinical research, but the importance of the regulations and uh, that would be lesser as compared to pharmacovigilance and the clinical development. So, uh, because how it, it is there. In terms of the scope of all these three fields, uh, in the corporate, uh, usually with the time of experience and individual expertise, you will get promotions and you can reach to the any level that is possible. So if I would say, uh, say that uh, what are my seniors are doing or the top notch doctors are doing, they are actually at a very high positions, almost after 15 to 20 years of experience in any of this domain. So, and they would reach almost a vice president level or that kind of level. Uh, so you might have seen your engineering colleagues and uh, that uh, they are doing or when they are uh, uh, going upwards in the ladder of the corporate ladder, they will have this kind of designations. It's so simple. director, by, by, uh, associate vice president and vice president. And in terms of that one, so every field has their own ladder, but uh, that ladder can be opened as early as uh, or you can reach to the top of your ladder in just 12 to 15 years time. And as late as, as a 20 to 25 years time as well, based on your expertise and your interest in that field and how much you have given to that uh, field. So that's Sir, what to do during the residentship for entering the industry with a good job and how to avail for those jobs and detail of each types. And what is the lifestyle monetary aspects of this branch? Okay, so I will take the first question, uh, lifestyle and monetary, I will take in the after yes, again, because the first question itself is quite long. Yes, so about, uh, I would say that uh, in terms of the uh, residency, what you should do uh, to get a job in industry, so for that, I would say that uh, uh, the uh, resident should be uh, not just on the academics part. So currently the MD farming is uh, overall, it's more focused on the academics where uh, you will learn the general pharmacology or systemic pharmacology, all pharmacology aspect, what are the drugs are doing. But over and above that, academics should be strong, but over and above that, uh, what will be required for the industry is your attitude and aptitude towards the any problem. So, so because here, uh, what a general understanding in the industry is that, that you can learn about the theory part by uh, again reading, because no one can read and uh, memorize everything for lifetime. 
so everyone understand in the industry that uh, whichever the therapeutic branch uh, the doctor will be put in there will be a theoretical knowledge uh, will be acquired by again re revising the concept and uh, uh, the basics about the uh, drugs in that area so uh, so industry would not require that you are very thorough with the too much about the academics but they would require that how many uh, presentations or presentation skills communication skills uh, your attitude uh, how much uh, uh, your soft skills are there what i would say that uh, in terms of uh, so one a resident what should they do in during the residency they should interact with more and more people that is the uh, the single line uh, thing because when you interact with others then you come to know about yourself as well as the what others are doing so for that to interact you require platforms and for that platforms i would recommend that all uh, pg students in this in the md pharma they should attend uh, maximum number of conferences workshops not just on the theory part but to do networking so networking is really important in the industry uh, that uh, to get your first job done but it is not just only one thing but it is really important thing so because your peers your colleagues will be there in the other uh, uh, other similar branches or other uh, industry so when you grow up with them in your field then what happens that uh, you have the better visibility in the system because you if you are in a one company like giving the example of zydas or torrent or intas or any other uh, sun pharma then your colleague will be in the another company of similar nature so when uh, you would have the in, uh, thorough interaction then you can have the broader vision that what other companies are doing what the things are going on and with the better networking you might get a good job first good job after the first job uh, uh, everything depends on you how one would excel in that uh, job and based on that the ladder will be uh, means you can climb the ladder that going upwards and upwards in the thing so so that's the about uh, thing in terms of the how to get a job it's really nowadays not that much uh, difficult even for the fresher because you uh, after doing md pharma you can upload in nokri in any kind of job portal usually but it really requires time it requires time to get your first job uh, because just after md pharma uh, it's not that just you after completion if you are completing in june that in july you will get the job uh, so you might require 3 to 6 months time uh, after completion of your md so so that's the how but what i would recommend that as soon as your uh, uh, final exams are about to be there uh, you can upload your resume in uh, respective portals Uh, like in if it is exams in april you can uh, upload just after the exams when you are waiting for the results so that kind of thing that one can do to reduce this lag period and uh, for the interview preparation what i would say uh, be thorough with the communications so that's the how during residency also you practice a lot of for the presentations there are good uh, youtube videos are available right now uh, good uh, allied courses are available for the improving of communication and communication does not mean just by english so it's a concept that uh, we understand that good english means good communication it's not like that uh, usually communication means here that how you can uh, transcribe your message into the uh, uh, audience so that's the how uh, everyone should learn uh, that skill and it is not it's everyone uh, would not born with that one. some persons might born with that kind of intelligence and the skill that uh, they are more uh, uh, focus on the they would have got a training during the uh, school days that were involved in the locution competition debate competitions where this kind of skills will uh, develop but even if you are not that skill uh, you can develop these skills because uh, from my journey in the industry i uh, know that it can be developed and it uh, it needs to be developed to go higher so these are the other softer skills that i would uh, uh focus during the residency another third thing that i would focus on the academics part that one should do during the residency uh for this one it's about 
at least get a basic knowledge about about these fields. Like if I want to pursue clinical research, what is the protocol? What is how the research protocol are written? Research methodology, what is that? What is the basics about the statistics uh, that one should know? If you are your interest in drug safety, pharmacovigilance, you should know what is the terminology, how the essay reporting, serious adverse event, and how the things are going on in the industry. What are the update report? What are the aggregate reports? So you at least get a basic uh, understanding of the terminology. So when I just give the example that when we enter from 12 to the MBBS, everything we have to learn about the skeleton. We just it's know the skeleton. Yeah. So, but every bone has a uh, unique it's characteristic. It's when we learn during the first MBBS, this is the femur. This is the this and that and uh, and great. Uh, so everything at least you can learn the terminology. Uh, during the residency, uh, you don't have to go into depth, but you can learn the terminology and the basic biostatistics. Just what is p-value, what is the uh, confidence interval, that kind of things that you can learn during your this one. And there are so many good workshops, co conferences are there that uh, they will teach you. Uh, yes. Like uh, because I have learned most of the things from my workshops uh, yes. during my residency, so I know that uh, there are so many good workshops uh, going on. Uh, so that's the thing that uh, you should spend something for your development. Be, otherwise, what will happen that you will just confine to your academics. Then afterwards, you have to spend uh, from the industry. Otherwise, the growing up in the ladder will be uh, somewhat difficult. So if you want to grow faster, you want to reach uh, top positions in 15 years time. Uh, and then you have to invest right now during the residency because what I've learned during my MD days also that you have good amount of time after academics as well as your research project. So just, sorry, just utilize your time uh, uh, in a judicious way and you can learn many more things by just by reading, by Googling uh, that kind of concepts. So you can do that one. Uh, so I think the second question was about Second question, it is about how to, okay, uh, uh, which personality types sh should prefer not to choose the branch? No, no, about, I think there was one lifestyle related and uh, that one. Uh, that one, uh, lifestyle and monetary aspects is the one oh, question, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. So this was, yeah, so lifestyle and monetary aspects, yeah, this is a really good uh, thing. And uh, as we know that monetary is the, main, uh, is the biggest yes, motivator in the life. At the end, uh, yeah. it matters. Yeah. So, so that's uh, and you should think about it. This is not a really, uh, this is not a bad or taboo thing. It's really good that you should know what what you are pursuing, and where you can grow, or uh, how much height you can get uh, with this kind of field. So, from this one, I would say for all three branches: clinical development, pharmacovigilance, or the medical marketing. Monetary aspects are really good. Really, really good. In terms of as compared to academics, you will learn or you may start at the same level, but in the three to five years time, uh, you will the, are there in academics because academics require different skill set. So that's one thing. If I would compare as compared to other clinical branches, yes. so uh, there you require a more lag period because clinical branches where someone would apply it, there is no. Uh, limit for the monetary aspect uh, but uh, so but in here also you will get that kind of uh, monetary benefits but at a later age of your lives like if i would say that uh, what kind of salary that vice president would be getting and uh, that kind of thing then they are really really high I means uh, you can think of uh, a figure in your mind and it will be uh, above that one so, so that's that kind of uh, monetary benefit is there. In terms of the lifestyle, I would say uh, uh, the the uh, lifestyle would be better as compared to because here the work life balance. So even right now, uh, if I am would be there, I would have only five days a week. So Saturday Sundays will be off, and uh, I can do whatever I want to do for my family or things, and. Uh, it's the same thing would be true for any industry most of the time so usually they would have the saturday uh, alternate saturday off your uh, all five days a week so that kind of thing 
and after nine to six, you will not get bothered by by the other persons. So, so in terms of uh, like if I would say the clinical branches, uh, uh, your patient can call you at any time point of time in at three o'clock also for your emergency. So you might have to go there. So that will be there. But uh, so that's the uh, if you want a work life balance uh, and earn a good amount of money. So then the uh, MD pharma with uh, exposure to the industry would be a better choice. So so that's the thing that uh, it's there. Uh, but uh, in in second thing about lifestyle that if you want to go for a urbanized lifestyle, like uh, may, many of the clinical doctors have to go if they are not super specialist or that kind of thing, then they have to go smaller towns. Uh, where it might be you find the education or the uh, adjustment problem, but uh, most of the time you, if you are doing in any of these branches, you will be settling in the one of the big cities and or most of the other metro cities. So, so that's there, and you will continue your journey till means your retirement in most of the uh, big cities of India. So that's there. Third perspective, I would say that someone might be because there are so many PG aspirants or MBBS students want to pursue outside India. So exactly. someone would not be able to do USMLE or that kind of thing uh, or that kind of uh, European regulations and whatever the entrance exams of them. Uh, there are, because some of my colleagues have settled abroad after doing uh, MD Pharmac or doing and they are doing jobs there. So because because MD Pharmac uh, are not dealing directly with the patient, so they, they don't require licenses at exam outside India. So so because they are not directly dealing with the patient, so uh, they are exempt for that one. But you require a job uh, in the pharma industry, so that who can sponsor you, and there is this is another route that you can opt if you want to settle outside India. But believe me, it's a tough job. Stuff not not to correct, but uh, uh, there are many persons that have done this one. So to settling outside India, and uh, all the branches have this kind of facility means clinical development, pharmacovigilance, and medical marketing. But uh, and if you are good and uh, making friends and want to live abroad or travel uh, like anything, you should pursue medical marketing. So because medical marketing person have to travel a lot, they would get a flavor of uh, good kind of hotel it's it's more what we say that's a uh, md pharma after that it's a glamorous job <laughs> overall so so that's the thing that uh, uh, medical marketing persons would get that kind of benefit as well that uh, they can roam around in very good hotels very good staff uh, and a very sophisticated environment outside india inside india so wherever they are going so they would get a very good treatment as well so so this is the lifestyle part of the thing and the monetary as well that uh, I think we have covered. It's quite elaborative, sir. Uh, like <laughs> now, sir, which personality type should prefer not to choose this branch? Like, no. Okay. Yeah. Right. So what I would say, uh, see, uh, after doing MD pharma, one thing that one would lose is about the direct patient touch. Okay. So, so that's uh, because when one would pursue the uh, dream of becoming a doctor. In India, it's at least that they want to treat the patient. So they would see their themselves that uh, getting a stethoscope in the neck and then uh, doing the rounds in the ward and then uh, uh, treating the patients. So if you are inclined towards that one and you want to give 100% uh, in the uh, clinical doctors, because after even becoming clinical doctors, you would have to have the continual like residency like uh, phase almost. Uh, till uh, you become very senior consultant. Otherwise, uh, and if you are in academics, uh, uh, then the monetary benefit will be similar to the non uh, uh, means uh, other uh, non clinical branches. So, if you want to uh, get a good monetary benefit after becoming a doctor, and you want to pursue a clinical touch, like you want to treat the patients, then the MD Pharma is not a branch for you. But if you want to do a, doing a, some work life balance, you are fine with the steady growth uh, of uh, thing. You want to pursue a good lifestyle with good monetary benefits uh, that uh, you want to see the, your uh, 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 I means children are getting in uh, good cities only. 
can md pharma can with this kind of industry uh, job you will get that kind of thing otherwise uh, uh, if you want to uh, treat the patients uh, then it's better to uh, get a clinical branch another thing i just want to add here uh, that many of the things that uh, they would uh, think that because i'm not getting a good branch let me take this branch uh, or whatever the branch that is available or if i'm not, i'm i'm inclined towards the clinical but if i'm not getting let me uh, get whatever i'm get let me opt what i'm uh, i'm getting so for this i would recommend that uh, don't take that kind of decisions uh, if you are not that much old and this one one year drop or that one would not affect too much in in your overall career uh, unless until you have the other personal factors or that one where you have to do a residency otherwise it's fine uh, that you can take one drop and improve your mark and you pursue your dream dream career like uh, if you want to do become a clinical doctor that is also fine but just by uh, because otherwise what happens that after some years of yours you will get frustrated in this field any field this is general advice for all the uh, pg aspirants so when you think that you are not fitting in that well you can drop and take a next step for the where where you are dreaming yourself and uh, believe me uh, in one year life because i have also done that uh, to get a uh, all india at that time all india pg exam was there so to uh, to for the preparation of that exam i have to take after internship i have to take a one year break but in overall career life uh, career development it does not matter too much so getting a md in one year after before does not matter you will get the height that you want to achieve eventually so so that's the message that uh, the for the pg experience of current batch that uh, just think that what you are uh, looking for uh, yourself in the future sir any special message like so i think the special message would be for any motivation kind of thing like any like uh, so that's uh, that's <laughs> like that i am not that much senior or that kind of professor that uh, would be there but what i would i have understood from this 9 years old uh, experience and from my clinical colleagues and uh, non clinical colleagues what they are doing and other uh, that how, how what they have achieved in the life so that's uh, how uh, that you have to dream big and for uh, once you have the dream to do something uh, then and then you can work for that one so every moment of the life you require motivation to do next level so that's there uh, uh, here also that even if you are getting a branch that uh, uh, it's uh, a, but your inclination is towards a different branch but if you are getting a good branch like uh, uh, because of the social pressure you should not take like if you are taking a clinic you ha you are getting a, you are a, have a good rank in the uh, neat yes. exam and then uh, but your inclination is towards a non clinical branch or a, a lower clinical branch like if someone who's getting uh, radiology but his inclination is towards the ophthalmology or uh, this one uh ent or any kind of lower or uh, as compared to the previous branch it's uh, lower in terms of the monetary or the uh, ranking list that where where it is getting stop you should take whatever the branch you feel uh, it will be best for you because i have seen that the, who are getting the top player in any field is the guys that who take their own choices it's not the guys that will do because of the social pressure so that i have learned uh, when and when uh, in the life i will be in, uh, means i am doubt i will take that choice that uh, yeah i want to do this one that's why i'm doing uh, so that's the same advice uh, don't get pressured by the society that because you are getting so much good rank uh, you should take a medicine only or you should take surgery only or anesthesia only or uh, because you are not getting any branch and you are in, uh, then let's take pharmacology also and this also or anatomy also or any kind of thing uh so on both side you should take your choice and uh, this kind of things will help you and uh, if you are not taking this decision right now that uh, uh that uh, whether i am pursuing what i my dream job 
then what will happen that you will not be excellent you will won't be in that area among the one percent of the top-notch persons and believe me monetary benefit or lifestyle you will get if you are in the, the top-notch persons irrespective of the branch so even my academic uh, md format who are in the top-notch uh, institute they are actually designing the regulations for us and that we are following so it's not about just earning even though they are earning less in academics but their fame is very uh, higher than the what we are having in the industry so we would ask them to become a consultant or that kind of thing uh, to discuss the projects in this month so in any way either as a fan or by monetary benefits you will get what you want if you are in the top 1% of that uh, field yes. and to get into top 1% you require continuous motivation in the life and for that one you re require a dream job in your uh, dream field of your in the after very PG. nice PG. very good to hear sir very nice and it's quite impressive also sir it's not like uh, don't deviate uh, based on social pressure uh, just uh, we have to know what are the hard points uh, we should know our calling uh, right. like you said it's an absolute honor to interview sir thank you so much it's yeah. quite pleasure yeah thank you thank you thank you shravani for this one and this good initiative uh, uh, if you uh, have, uh, you can drop my LinkedIn bio in this one. If you, anyone has a question, you can uh, drop me a uh, question in my message to the LinkedIn. So, okay. so that's the uh, way you can communicate with me. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you.